It is our duty as a woman to be in this state of magnetism, enhanced magnetism, grace. Because when we are that, we spark God in every woman that lays her eyes on us. It is impossible to be in this level of magnetism and truth and not remind another woman what she might have forgotten or lost along the way. That is so much more than just inspiration. It is our duty to be in our highest magnetism, to remind another woman that God exists within her. Whew. Transmission time, babies. Yay. <laughs> I am so excited. Today's topic is a whole another level for me personally of understanding and bringing back truth to myself. And I'm really excited to share that with you. Every time I prepare a video, there's there's a download connected to that. So it's not just a topic that I think is exciting. It's something in my life that I have to understand on a deeper level or bring back home to me. So that's why every time I record a YouTube video, it is behind all the words, a wordless transmission. Because I'm basically projecting into the space all the things that I just recently, through a lot of hardship, learned. So in this case, if you've been here, if you follow this channel, you know that these videos are special in this sense. They're not just regular YouTube videos. And I see this really as a portal for us to all come together and to upgrade ourselves. Kind of like, okay, <laughs> okay, mamas, here's what I, here's what I learned. Here's what I just went through. And this is why the channel is now officially called Empress Energetics, because that's what we're cultivating all together in unification. And if you've been here, you know the word Empress entails a lot. There's a lot in there. I don't use words loosely, at least not when I'm really aware throughout the day, maybe here and there, <laughs> but I'm very intentional when it comes to that. And the Empress to me is, first of all, it's something that revealed itself through me. If there was maybe a deity connected to that, it would probably be Kuan Yin. That's, mm. oh, yeah, shit. <laughs> Like, she's definitely um, my closest connection to any form of personified deity would be Kuan Yin, which is an energetic. And we're cultivating this all together here. And the Empress is almost this, this cosmic deity embodied in our beautiful vessel. And so this is not just some like, what's up, queen? Like, you can't even use the word like empress like that because it's so rich and it is connected with a lot of cosmic responsibility and the vision as the earth steward. Because I believe that all of us, especially those of you that feel drawn to what we're creating here, we're all here to birth something that either hasn't been on earth or has been lost for a long, long time. And we're here to create from purity. So I speak about purified creation. And today's topic is so rich and so deep. And it's about magnetism. And today's topic, the topic of magnetism, came into being because of our last call in our rebirth container. For a lack of a better word right now, I call it our mystery school. It's this nine month journey 
in which we bring our bio-spiritual anatomy back into nature, back into harmony. And I saw it for us as the opportunity of bringing our oracles together in a round table. So we're basically upgrading each other and we're also going through similar energetic upgrades or updating of our energetic system. It just looks different. And in our last call, I was so in awe. Like I literally was speechless. Nancy is nine months pregnant and she is just, oh my God, African royalty. And when I saw her and I witnessed her, I was, there's something that rearranged inside of me. There's a remembrance that came back to me. And there was a magnetism around her, a magnetism because every word she spoke and everything she radiated was God. He caused it because he did not see the jewel in me. He did not see the goddess in me. He did not see the queen in me. He did not see the empress in me. He did not see the divine in me. He did not see the universe in me. But how could he see the divine in me if he did not see the divine with the woman he's sleeping with? So today's video is actually the result of something that Nancy sparked in me, a remembrance that she sparked in me. And today I'm here to demystify that state for us the state of magnetism sovereignty grace it's it's going to be a really expansive beautiful exploration today and demystify isn't the right word because magnetism in itself is the result of the mystery but i want to get closer to the core and really explore what it is. And when I saw her, I was reminded of all of our responsibility to emanate this. It is our duty as a woman to be in this state of magnetism, enhanced magnetism, grace. Because when we are that, we spark God in every woman that lays her eyes on us. It is impossible to be in this level of magnetism and truth and not remind another woman what she might have forgotten or lost along the way. That is so much more than just inspiration. It is our duty to be in our highest magnetism, to remind another woman, that God exists within her. And as you know, if you've been here, when I use the term God, it transcends all religions, all dogmas. I am speaking about the will of creation. I'm speaking about the benevolent power, creation power that underlies everything in this reality and in this existence. So when I use the term God, it comes from, to me, a more mature understanding and not an attachment of this deity or this, this personified deity, this father in the sky. And if that floats your boat and if that serves you, stay here, you're welcome, whatever, brings you the highest expansiveness and whatever makes you feel in truth. Whatever is charging your electromagnetic field to the fullest is truth. Whatever that may be for you. I don't know that. I can only feel into my resonance field. And so if we're already deep into magnetism. Let's get into the, the common beliefs of magnetism or what I see as magnetism. When we see that person, and there's just that something about them. We can't really pinpoint it. It's just this, there's something about that person. And that something is 
magnetism. What stuck with me was this typical how to be magnetic as fuck. And some of the things you will hear are kind of basic and I don't I don't mean that mean because I love that. I always say there's nothing wrong with basic stuff because we don't start with the deepest core of something. We start kind of like on the outside of the seed, right? And then we slowly work our way into the core of the seed. So there's nothing wrong with with superficial teachings or superficial perceptions because eventually they will lead to more questions, to deeper questions. And that's when we as a collective or a feminine collective, as women, as the oracles that we are, get closer and closer and closer to the truth. A lot of times we hear that you have to stop caring what other people think to become magnetic. That's one of the foundational things that polarity teachings will tell you or women that talk about divine femininity or how to enhance your magnetism, just stop caring what other people think. And a lot of these things are a byproduct of magnetism, not the thing that cultivates magnetism. And this is impossible to achieve. Like how many times did it actually shift anything if someone told you, oh, just stop caring what other people think. And you're like, thank you, Lord. <laughs> like, what? Thank you. I, I didn't know, right? It doesn't help. Or how many times when someone tells you, well, stop worrying, you're like, ah, all right. I didn't know. So this is kind of pointless because not caring what other people think is the byproduct of your magnetic state but it is not what gets you there. Because if you're in a current like frequency or state of being where you still care what people think, you need a perception shift. There, there's something more that needs to happen than just telling yourself, oh, now I don't care what other people think. And with magnetism, we can't fake a frequency. And how many times, at least I'm guilty of that, have we done this? Oh, I don't give a shit, right? And you post all these pictures and you're like, I don't, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a shit. But then you check the Instagram story every 10 minutes to see if your ex saw it, right? So we can't, this whole like, oh, I don't care anymore. That's bullshit. It's a paradigm shift that needs to happen, that needs to occur. Because when you care what other people think, it's your current fuel source. And if you care what people think, it's due to a minimized and decreased magnetism within your body and within your field, which means you're not healthy. Magnetism is essential and natural to a healthy body. So if you lack magnetism, you're currently not in a healthy system. A healthy system will never care what other people think because it's self-sustaining. It's its own fuel source. You receive from your own source. So just to tell someone, stop caring what people think and that's how you enhance your magnetism is not going to work because currently this person, me in the past, other people in the past, maybe you at some point or whenever, you're being fueled by what other people think of you. You're being fueled when someone adores you, likes you, sees you. And you're being drained when someone doesn't. And that's not a healthy, harmonious, natural state to be in. So in order for you to actually move from not caring what people think, you have to shift your paradigm fully. And when you shifted your paradigm and you established your healthy natural magnetism again not caring what people think will be just a byproduct because now you're in touch with your truth again now you're in a magnetic state of being the whole kind of basic approach to cultivate magnetism as a woman is this typical be confident be self-assured 
don't seek validation, make other people feel good, be in self-love and cultivate self-love and not that there's anything basic about self-love. But again, these are all things that are requiring a deep paradigm shift and we can't really fake it until we make it at least not 100% of the time. There are certain ways where we can practice that and it does work. But if you are, again, totally cut off from your own fuel source, that internal magnetism, these things will be impossible for you to attain because you literally don't know how to feel good or you don't know how to be confident. And for someone that feels a low self-esteem, to be told, oh, just feel worthy of yourself. Again, it's this whole thing. It doesn't work. It doesn't work just because you tell someone, oh, like, feel worthy. Love yourself. All right. <laughs> it ain't that easy. Or at least it, re it requires like a deeper shift. And so let's explore magnetism. Because magnetism is not just a parable. We are talking and speaking about literal magnetism. And as a human being in general, and I speak about women because I talk to women and I am a woman and it's just more fun for me like that. Um, but all humans need a strong magnetic field. That's our innate nature. And so that's why I said, if we are not magnetic, if you don't experience magnetism in your life, your system is currently compromised and your health is compromised. Like your physical health, your organ health, your life force is being siphoned. So this is really important. If you're currently experiencing a struggle life, if you're currently experiencing massive survival shit, fear, worries, and you've lost your spark, and you know what that is. We've all been at a certain point where we looked in the mirror and we're like, I don't like what I'm seeing. I don't recognize what I'm seeing anymore. I can't feel what I'm seeing anymore. Whoever this person is in the mirror isn't me. She lost her spark. She lost her truth. I've been there, like drained and empty. I've lost my magnetic power. I lost my nature plenty of times in this life. And there is so much more truth for me to step into. So we all know how that feels. And when we're in that state, we're disconnected from our truth. We're disconnected from the ethernet, like I call it, or organic life on earth. When we're in survival, we're not in a natural state of being, which means somehow our magnetic field is not intact. And let's explore this. Let's explore the magnetic field for a second. Organic life on earth, everything, that exists in nature has an electromagnetic field. Even the earth itself has a magnetic field. And what that magnetic field does is, number one, it helps with navigation, but it helps to protect the earth, helps to protect it from solar rays or other outside, whatever comes in from the cosmos, I don't know. But you have that same mechanism within you. You have a magnetic field that protects you. So when this magnetic field is intact, you are divinely protected. You have godly thoughts, a godly experience, a natural experience, which is usually harmonious and quite blissful. You are connected to the great ethernet which means it's almost like your magnetic field functions as a signal, right? Just like out in the wild, in nature, animals communicate with each other. And I believe that they communicate through electromagnetism, right? If there's a sick animal, it's kind of signaling, hey, I'm, 
I'm offering myself. Nature is benevolent. It can look really rough from the outside, but it's not chaos. There is a system to it. There's almost like a hierarchy to it. And I believe the hierarchy is created and understood by the animals through electromagnetism. But in nature, everyone is nourished. The birds aren't scared. The flowers aren't in scarcity. Because everything is connected through the ethernet due to the electromagnetic field. A flower has an electromagnetic field that pulls in the bee, that attracts the bee. A flower doesn't have to worry, doesn't know self-loathe, it just is. And through the intact electromagnetic field, it attracts exactly what it needs. And you, my love, are that beautiful, perfect flower when you have an intact electromagnetic field. This way you're protected. When you're in that, it's easy to be confident because you're connected to your truth. It's easy to walk in a room and not care what other people think because you're connected to nature. You are organified, like I like to say. Like you are in an organic state of being. So all the thoughts that you have, which are magnetism in itself, are your intrinsic thoughts. They're sparked by that God spark, that benevolent creation power that you are tuned into because of your magnetism. And so now you're not as impacted by outside thoughts or other people. And in that, you see that not caring what people think is a natural byproduct because you're in this protection field. You don't even perceive what other people think because it is absolutely irrelevant for you. If it's not God, it's not relevant. As simple as that. If it's not organic, if it's not nature, it's not relevant. If it ain't dripping, I'm dipping. Okay? So that experience naturally creates confidence, self-assurance, high self-worth, because you're in nature again. And nature doesn't know self-doubt, self-loathe, or whatsoever. You're in the vibration of nature. And so when you walk into a room, naturally people will look at you and be like, there's something about that person. Yeah, there's God about that person. There's nature about that person. They can't pinpoint it, but that's what it is if it comes from a pure state. And you don't care what people think in that state because you know if it's anything negative, it isn't God anyway, right? Because people who are in nature only uplift each other or give very constructive criticism. But everyone who's in their nature wants to see another thrive. Everyone who's in their nature naturally doesn't judge. Or if they don't like something, they don't give a shit. So that state of not caring requires your magnetic field to be intact. And then this is for my empaths out there. A lot of you use it as an excuse to be drained by environments. Nothing has the power to drain you when you're in a healthy electromagnetic state of being. So for those who are like, oh, I can't go there. This is draining or going there. I can't do this, right? This is like this environment is draining my energy or I can't be around people because they're draining my energy. Nothing can compromise your energy if your magnetic state of being is intact. So that is a sign to all of us, if we feel that way, something in us is leaking, we're somewhere not in truth, and we have a weak magnetic field. Because in a strong magnetic field, you change the environment. Again, there's a scientific reason for that. When your electromagnetic field is highly charged, highly magnetic, on an actual level. What happens when 
the strongest magnet is surrounded by weaker magnets. They will all orient and structure to and be attracted to the big magnet. The same happens for you. If you, in your intact, beautiful, healthy, magnetic field or with your magnetic field, you walk into the room, what will happen is you will literally change other people's cell structures. You will rearrange something in other people. Like I experienced with Nancy. She rearranged something in my field like massively. She impacted me massively. So the same happens for you. Your radiance will rearrange other people's cell structures. Some people might not like it, but that doesn't matter. Because maybe, you know, in that some shit will surface. But their negative thoughts won't impact you. Because you're able to, to perceive these lower thought forms as intrusions. Thoughts have a magnetic field as well. But these lower thought forms are not something that is able to penetrate you when you're in your strong magnetism. You simply see it for what it is. A lower thought form that dies right here. Not something that is perpetuated because it's not nature. So you, you might feel it when you're like, okay, that's irrelevant for me. Or that's that. Or go back to where you came from, wherever that may be. It's not a part of nature. Not a part of organic life on earth. Not a part of our perfect organic ethernet. You're not affected negatively by lower thought forms. If you are, again, if you walk into a room, you're drained, you go back home, and now you're spiraling down, that's a big sign for you that your magnetic field is weak and that somewhere in your life you're living out of resonance with truth. I want to explore a very specific state of being that is, to me, absolutely married to a healthy magnetism. And that is grace. And what I think is really interesting is that grace isn't really mentioned as a state of being. It's mentioned in the Bible or Quran in a sense of God's grace or always, I see it always connected to mercy, God's mercy, God's grace. But it's not described or mentioned as a state of being, the state of being in grace. And even on this, the, the work of power versus force, where we have these frequency ranges, like love radiates on this frequency, or guilt is like this kind of frequency, like 50, or shame is 20, and then love is 600, and peace is 700, and bliss is 1,000, or, or enlightenment is 1,000, right? This, the scale, maybe we've all seen it before. It's like a kind of new agey thing. But grace isn't on there. And grace is a very, if not the most potent state of being. To me, it is ultimately linked and married to magnetism. Grace is this walking with God, walking as nature, walking with your head up high, because you know you being on this earth makes you the chosen one. You know that you chose yourself, meaning nature chose you over and over again. God chose you. Knowing that everything you touch will turn into beauty, will turn into life. Not even turn into gold, but turn into more life and more life. It's connected to a deep worship for your path everything you went through was part of this great miracle that is currently exposing itself step by step bit by bit grace is the state of walking with your whole ancestry in the back rooting for you feeling proud of what you're making out of everyone's life Grace 
has no space for self-doubt, self-loathe, all of these things that are inorganic, therefore artificial. Yes, they are on the human spectrum, but continuous self-loathe is not natural. Shame has its place. A little bit of shame here and there is honestly good. I think people lost healthy shame, to be honest. Different cultures have shame intact and you see they kind of function better. But this perpetual self-shame and self-doubt, self, this, this guilt, all of these things, they have no space in a natural, organic state of being. They have no space when you're in grace. And grace is connected to the ultimate remembrance of truth and who you are. So with that, walking in grace means walking as if you represent nature. Walking as if you represent God organic life on earth you are the representation of what life and truth really is so how do you walk how do you talk what do you emanate that is grace that's different from love and peace and bliss is all of this in there yes but even if you don't experience love bliss and peace you can still experience grace. You can go through the roughest times and you can still experience grace. And that's also the state of the Empress. The Empress isn't cultivated in the midst of beauty and beautiful clothing and beautiful environments. No, the Empress is cultivated when you down in the dirt on your knees crying, lost, hopeless. This is where she's born. And grace is something you can step into at any point in time because it's solely the remembrance of your nature. And how do you radiate that? How do you emanate that? How do you walk, talk, and be? And you remember what truth is. And that is grace. And in that, any time you fall out of that state of grace, you fall out of magnetism. And I know there are a lot of teachings, kind of like Tantra style. Everything goes. And yes, everything goes. But there is a right and wrong. And there's no ancient sacred text that tells you what that right and wrong is. But you have an internal navigation system, which is magnetism, that tells you immediately what is right and wrong for you. And so anytime you experience a damage in that field, you feel it by falling from grace because this creates a certain protection. And when you act out of integrity, meaning you act out of the integrity of this electromagnetic field, you will feel shitty. It's plain and simple. It's really easy. Anything that causes you to feel bad, to feel drained, to not feel this magnetic charge in you, it's out of integrity for you. I don't know, maybe that's different for every person, that's a very subjective experience, but you can't bullshit yourself. You know when you step out of integrity. You have your own personal navigation system. If you're in grace, if you're in integrity, you will have the strongest magnetic field there is. And with that, all the protection that comes with it. You're connected to the ethernet. You attract everything you need, all the resources, Everything is coming to you because you're signaling. You have a navigation system for the ethernet. And so it can send you everything 
that you require. That's the beauty of being in integrity. If you're out of integrity, if you're out of electromagnetic integrity, you will lose it and you will feel that. The moment you step out of grace, the moment you forget how protected you are, how miraculous this existence is, the moment you forget what nature is, the moment you act from fear, the moment you act from a state that lacks gratitude, the moment you're greedy, whatever it is, the moment you're lying, the moment you lose yourself in self-doubt or whatsoever, the moments you're being deceptive, you fall from grace immediately, you can feel it. And that's when you lose all of the benefits of this beautiful electromagnetic field. You're now stepping into a different reality that is less and less connected to the truth of organic life on earth. Because organic life on earth is very benevolent, is protecting you, is supporting you. And I highly recommend for you all to read the Anastasia series. It will remind you immediately what life is truly made out of. It's about this Siberian shamani, basically, that lives in the Siberian forest. And whether that's a fictional story or it really happened, again, you will feel it. It'll do something to your electromagnetic field. So I highly recommend that. Grace is also connected immensely to the way we navigate time. Can you be in grace if you hold belief systems that time is running out, everything is urgent, there's not enough time, time is passing by? All of these things that we're kind of indoctrinated into. When you build from here, when you build, create from that space, are you able to maintain a strong magnetic field? Like literally at this point, all I want us to ask ourselves is not right or wrong, not truth or lie, just does my magnetic system enhance or is it diminished when I believe that or when I move from there? It's the only question you need to ask yourself and no one else can tell you what's right and wrong for you. Are you able to still move in grace if this urgency, this hustle, this time is running out, time is a limited resource, all of these things, if that is your belief systems, are you moving in grace? Is that possible? For me, it is not. Time is malleable. I can't say time isn't real because it, I, I don't know what it is, but what I feel it is, what I sense it is, it's malleable. So we've created a calendar. We've created a time system where time is measured and time is clocked. And we have basically at least 99.9% .9 of the human collective subscribing to that. If we can bend air, water, fire, of course we can bend time. And time is in that sense malleable. So if we all believe time is running out and we're short on time or everything has this urgency, it'll reflect in the way time behaves. So if we're more curious about time, if time becomes inconsequential for us, there's a grace that comes with that. If you're building and creating, not from urgency, but from I'm doing this for the long game. This is a long game, baby. Isn't there immediate grace that comes in? If you're not trying to build wealth really, really quick, which it's not going to work. It's questionable if it works. God's work is usually work that takes time to sprout because we're building a garden, right? We're working with nature. If I drop a seed... Some trees will take 30 years to grow. And yeah, some flowers will grow next year. Some herbs will grow in a month. But you see, like nature takes time. 
when we operate in the organic matrix, certain things will take a little time, but also time becomes malleable and inconsequential for us. So th there is a connection to grace and magnetism in how we navigate time, which is really, really important for us. We're trained out of grace, which now it's interesting that why isn't that a state that is accessible for us? Why are we trained to perceive time a certain way? Because if we perceive time a certain way, it's almost impossible to stay within grace, to feel grace, to cultivate magnetism. Because magnetism is sovereignty. Grace is sovereignty. You're now connected to the organic life on earth, ethernet. You don't really need anything from the outside. So therefore, whether we want to talk about dark forces on this planet or not, there's something that works against our nature and that's facts. So whether that was done purposefully or not, at this point it doesn't matter to me, it's inconsequential, but it happened. We were trained and programmed against our nature in many ways, in how to perceive time, in how to move through life, always in a hurry. Right? Just like look at certain Western cultures and then go somewhere into like Latin America or even Thailand where people just perceive time differently. There's a grace in the way they move. Things are different here. And grace means there's a magnetism, there's nature in the way they move, there's God in the way they move. So school systems, all that train us out of grace. If we look into pop culture, everything we saw growing up was basically there to remove us from grace. Because when we carry ourselves in grace, we don't, again, we don't need anything from another system. And it just takes one woman in this grace, in her nature, she will remind you immediately. That's why it's so dangerous. Because if everyone is walking in their nature and you lose your nature for a second, you fall out of grace and you fall out of magnetism and you're met with someone who has it, it's like you're completely restructured within a moment. Because magnetic power is real. It's not a parable. It's actual happening. So if you're in someone's field that has this magnetism, you immediately have it as well. Now, this doesn't need to be a physical person because I have to be honest, when we walk outside, I mean, if you look for it, you will find it somewhere, but it's not like I live in Sedona and it's not like I walk out and I see people in grace all the time. It's, it's still rare but you can tune into the grace of, let's say, a deity. Like in the beginning of this video, even when I just spoke the name Quan Yin, I could, I could feel her magnetism. So when we tune into whatever that may be, maybe it's a future version of us, maybe it's a deity, maybe it's someone that we saw that just truly impacted us. When we call their energy in, and we're asking them, please allow their field to teach me. It'll happen. And then you will be fueled by, let's say it's a deity, by the deity's magnetism that it cultivated. So maybe there's someone really pure that you connect with or a saint that is really pure that you connect with. For example, Yogananda Paramahamsa is like, feels like one of the purest saints of, of kind of modern time to tune into for magnetism. Someone who just feels like, even though I'm just saying his name, I can feel my heart opening, right? It's like you know what's right and wrong based on how your electromagnetic field feels. Call in the saint, ask it to pray with you, to meditate with you, to teach you the magnetism that it has, and it will fuel you, it will support you. You can also, of course, create, alter ego is not the right word, but you can create a version of yourself in the future that walks in grace. How would she talk? How would she move? What would she say yes to? What's in her integrity? What isn't? 
and move from there. Because we have to cultivate your magnetic field again, make it strong. So there are a couple ways how to do that. And of course, the most important one I see is what are we fueling our body? Because living foods have their own magnetic field or electromagnetic field. So if we eat mostly raw living foods, meaning raw vegetables, raw fruits, sprouted nuts, whatsoever, you will feel that it enhances your own electromagnetism. Each and every one of our organs has their own electromagnetic field. So if we compromise any of these organs, we are compromising the whole, we're compromising our health, we compromise our divinity in that moment, we compromise our nature. And with that, we step into shit experiences like survival, hustling for everything. And if we look into the root, we will find that just on some essential level, we haven't been honoring our nature. And so structured water, bring that in. Again, how do you navigate time? Not wasting your time, but filling every single moment with meaning. Things don't need to be urgent. You don't have to hustle. You don't have to try to create something really quick. But honor each and every second. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time with scrolling. Don't waste your time with getting lost in, in social media. Build. Use your time wisely. That creates magnetism. The way you speak creates magnetism. Are you talking too much? Are you talking about meaningless shit all the time? Be quiet. Learn how to be wise. Learn how to use your words wisely. That creates magnetism. That enhances magnetism. Meditate. The face of God is right here. The nature of God is right there. It's accessible. So that's why in our journey, of the rebirth journey, we're going through sexual alchemy practices in which we're learning to bring the energy back to the brain, to activate our pineal gland, to activate our natural magnetism. When everything is flowing, when we have this microcosmic orbit flowing, we become a masterful attractor simply because we're back in our natural magnetism, connected to the ethernet. When you love, love without motive, are there certain relationships or connections that you uphold due to an ulterior motive? Release that. Release that because again, you cannot bullshit your magnetic field. True grace, true sovereignty. What's right for you lies in whatever builds up your magnetic field. And everything that is wrong for you, any vice, is what damages the magnetic field. It's that simple. When we keep the rules of the integration of human structure, we are in magnetism. We are in grace. We become magnetic. So your magnetism is essentially created by the obedience of the divine will of creation. And the divine will of creation itself is displayed in either fueling and enhancing your electromagnetic field or breaking it down. And that's a journey that you have to go on. And if we have to break it down in the most simplest terms of how to become magnetic as fuck, everything that feels good is creating magnetism. Everything that feels like shit is damaging it. We need you as a walking transmission woman. We need you in your magnetism. And I hope at this point you see why. Whew. Thank you. This is a really beautiful topic and I feel like there's so much more connected to that. Please let me know in the comment section what are your thoughts? What came through for you? Is there something that was sparked? Is there a reference experience you had connected to magnetism? If you feel magnetized by my field and you feel that there could be expansion in us working together or there's some 
magic and miracles that are meant to happen between us. I'm currently loving my short container, this one-on-one -on -one work that is only four weeks long because it's so potent. Like I'm really enjoying this. I'm used to longer containers, like 12 weeks, but this, this, I'm liking this because we kind of go in with a sword and we're like, choo, 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 demolish all that is no longer truth. And sometimes we really just need someone to come in and it's like, there's a blind spot, there's a blind spot. This is what you're not seeing here. You're stuck there because you're in the wrong paradigm. And from there, we kind of just delete everything that is false and bring back what is truth. And from there on, you get to create. And I'm only working with one person each month because I really want to give you my focus and I want to give your creations my focus. So in that, I also love to establish kind of like a game plan or an action plan for your creation. So if you're currently either creating a business or there's something that you want to birth, something new you want to establish, that's also the perfect container for it. So link is down below. Work with me in July or get on the wait list for August and September. And I'm really excited for that. Also, please like and subscribe because I feel like we need this. And when we hit a thousand subscribers, I want to open our Patreon so we can actually come together and experience more community and build. I'm going to share about that in, in later videos. I hope to see you next week. I've been super busy, so I can't promise, but I really want to I really want to get on it because YouTube enriches and expands my electromagnetic field. And therefore, it is my nature, therefore it is God. It brings me joy, and everything that brings joy is in integrity. I love you.